30, but joining me now on the show, he hosts the uh, Big Time Baseball podcast, the Down the Line podcast. You can hear those on the Odyssey app or wherever you got podcasts. And you see him on the MLB Network, and he has like six other podcasts. He's one of my favorite people to talk baseball with. It's the one, the only former big leaguer, Cody Decker. Cody, how are you this afternoon, my friend? Oh, That's Twilight Zone version of the dream. I'm down here in Los Angeles, a ton of all-star goodness, and I've been having a blast. I mean, checking out the stuff in Santa Monica, California, which is sick for me being from Santa Monica, California. To LA Live, Dodger Stadium, and I've been hitting bombs at Dodger Stadium all week, so I'm having a blast. It's right there in your backyard. I didn't see this, but I saw you tweet about the fact that on one of the dozen shows that you do, you wore an ascot? You wore an ascot, Cody Decker? Is this true? You pulled that off? Dude, I'm a badass. I can wear whatever I want. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I wasn't judging. I was just. It's, it's not, I don't know, Rami. It felt a little judgy. No, 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 no. It was. It was the. It was the. The. I was impressed and surprised that somebody in 2022 is pulling off an ascot like he's on Downton Abbey. You know what I mean? That's that's like, all it is. Rami, like a young Thurston Howell the Third. I rocked the <laughs> hell out of that bad boy. <laughs> Way to go. I'm proud of you, Cody. I, we were talking right before we, we brought you on about about Juan Soto and the show that he put on last night amidst all the rumors after he turned down 15 years, $440 million. Cody, it seems crazy that a team would let a talent like Juan Soto at 23 years old get, get away from them in, in a trade or in any other way, but... Can you even blame the Nationals when they have 15 years and $440 million on the table and he and Scott Boris are saying no? They were never going to get their hands on Juan Soto after the year and a half in the future. It's just not going to happen. It's either they're going to trade him now or they're going to trade him next year. And quite frankly, there might, there's a lot more value to trade him right now because you're going to get a year and a half of control. If you're a competing team and you can get two playoff runs with Juan Soto, yes, I will trade away the next 25 years of my farm system for that. Yeah, I mean, I I said yesterday on the show, every single team in this league, when you hear Juan Soto is on the trade block, should be trying to figure out a way to make it happen. I don't know how realistic it is for all 29 teams, but every every front office should be trying to put that puzzle together right now. You got to know there's already five teams that are putting together the most outrageous packages you've ever seen. And trust me, I have my theory on which team is going to come out on top. And keep in mind, this is not the extension. This is not a team that's going to get them and pay $500 million. This is a team that's going to get control of them for a year and a half and likely lose him. This is why I'm looking at you, A.J. Preller in San Diego. He's a madman. He'll, he'll sell anyone and anything that isn't nailed to the ground, and if it is nailed to the ground, he'll get a forklift. He is the, ty- he is the type of, of, of GM or front office guy that, that, will, that would pull off a move like that, Cody. They, they're not afraid of, of making the big splash move, and like you said, parting with some assets to, to get a guy like a Juan Soto. That does, that does make sense, San Diego. I haven't seen them on some of the lists that I've seen out there as possible suitors for Juan Soto, but that makes all the sense in the world when you say it. I mean, honest to God, think about that lineup when you got Fernando Tatis Jr. coming back and Manny Machado, and you throw a Juan Soto in the mix. Quite frankly, you throw a Juan Soto in the mix about five different teams right now, and immediately the uh, futures odds are going to drastically change. What about, and and <clears throat> for the, the purposes of our listeners, a lot of Giants fans, Within, within the sound of our voice right now, Cody. What do you think about Juan Soto in a Giants uniform? I don't like the sound of it, and that's not, that's not the reason you think. I would love for them to get their hands on Juan Soto, and it'd be an amazing fit. It really would be. But here's what I truly think the Giants are going to be waiting for this offseason. Aaron Judge is available. Aaron Judge is from San Francisco. Aaron Judge is a San Francisco Giants fan. Aaron Judge was just on MLB Network talking up how much he loved watching Barry Bonds hit balls into McCovey Cove and if you think there's a place he wants to go other than New York, it can't be anywhere but San Francisco. And you know the Giants can set for it. Talking with Cody Decker, you can catch him on the uh, Down the Line podcast, Big Time Baseball, also frequently over there on MLB Network. Cody, what about the other team that folks around here may follow or root for, the Oakland A's? Do you see any light at the end of the tunnel or any? Any any way for this thing to get turned around anytime soon? I, we heard Rob Manfred talk about the Coliseum and the stadium situation earlier today. Can there be no movement with the Oakland A's on the field until we see some movement off the field with the, the stadium situation? 
you know how much I want to give you good news right now? Do you know how much I want to say nice things? <laughs> really bad. Like, really, really bad. The first time on this station, talking with my old buddy Rami, new place I'm being introduced to. I know there's a lot of A's fans. Yeah, it's a nightmare, and it's never going to end. They're likely going to move, and it's just the way it is. And I think it sucks, because I think Oakland deserves a good ball club. They've been a good ball club for the last 10 years, and have had the misfortune of being around the buzzsaw that was the Houston Astros. And it, it really drives me nuts, but... The moment Bob Melvin left was the signal that this franchise has no interest in winning in the next decade. My last stop in radio and the place where I spent the vast majority of my radio career, Cody, was in Milwaukee, where I I would talk baseball with you there. And in Milwaukee, we'd hear the small market narrative of they can't spend so much money and so it's hard to compete. And you'd always tell fans there don't fall for that. The the money is there. Any team can make can make a big splash signing if if they really wanted to. Is is that the case with the A's or does the Coliseum in that situation in your opinion set them apart from 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 what you from what you would say before about the small market myth in Major League there, Baseball? There is absolutely a small market myth, but it really feels like the only two places in Major League Baseball it's remotely true is Tampa Bay and in Oakland, and that drives me absolutely insane. The Oakland A's are a historic franchise, and what really drives me crazy about this is I don't want to see the Oakland A's in a sports city. I want them to be cemented in Oakland forever. I would love for them to get a new ballpark. All the waterfront ballparks, all the things that we've seen plastered all over social media look wonderful, but I just don't see it happening. I think it's been written in stone that this team's been going to Vegas for the last 10 years. Talking with Cody Decker. Check him out on the uh, Odyssey app and a number of podcasts there also catch them on mlb network from time to time looking good on mlb network you you're 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 made for tv cody decker i don't mind telling you that ascot or no ascot you're looking good over there on the mlb network you know the pipes on my shoulder hanging off these gigantic boulder shoulders always help (laughs) we and in the past have both uh piled on rob manfred and today all of the baseball world and all of baseball internet and twitter is piling on Rob Manfred, after he was asked about he, the question he was asked was if his owners don't pay minor leaguers a living wage because they can't afford to or because they aren't interested in doing so. And Rob Manfred said, and I quote, Cody, I reject the I reject the premise that they're not being paid a living wage. Would you agree with the premise that they are not being paid a living wage? Cody Decker is somebody who's lived that life. Rami, I'm not going to answer the question because I'm assuming it's a rhetorical question. Obviously, no. Are you kidding me? I lived in a Honda Element one season when I was in Triple A. I never saw a comma in my paycheck until my sixth professional season, and I was 27 years old. Let's be real clear. It's criminal how minor leaguers are paid. Criminal. And Major League Baseball's been getting away with it for years. And right now, Congress has been looking into their anti-tax exemption. And that is something they really don't want to happen for Major League Baseball if they can get that uh, taken away from them. Because, quite frankly, if this is the case, if you think that minor leaguers are paid at a fair, fair wage, then make sure their contract is year to year. That major league contract, that minor league contract you sign when you're drafted, that's seven years if you're out of college. I couldn't be a free agent feasibly for a total of 10 full years uh, if I made it all the way through my minor league contract and three years of arbitration. I would have been 32 years old hitting free agency. And again, rhetorical question, Rob Manford knows what you're saying, right, Cody? This is just him towing the company line for his 32 bosses, the or the thir- his 30 bosses, the owner's of major league baseball is it that's and and he, it's it's such a bold-faced and insulting lie to you and me and anybody else who has their eyes half open but this is this is this is what we should have come to expect from rob manford because this has been what the entire tenure of his commissionership has been like i would honestly listen rob manford is not a dummy he is not a not smart man he's a very bright person there had to be a reason that he answered that question that way. I have no idea what it is, but there had to be some sort of purpose. I cannot imagine him saying that out loud and thinking that was going to go over in any way, shape, or form well. Well, with the hunk of metal answer that he gave around the whole Astro scandal, again, we shouldn't be surprised. He says stuff where you go, did he, re- did he really say that? Doesn't he know there are microphones and cameras pointed at him right now? Like, he has a history of just saying the thing he shouldn't say out loud, Cody. You know what? You're not wrong, and listen, 
Rob Manfred is exceedingly good at his job. Unfortunately, what his job is is being a union head chief for all the owners throughout Major League Baseball and not safeguarding the game of baseball, which the commissioner should be doing. And it, truth, truthfully, Rob Manfred loves baseball. I know everyone says he hates baseball. That is just not the case. Rob Manfred loves baseball. I just don't think he likes baseball players. Oh, I think he hates the game. Cody, I've theorized before, and we got to get to a break, so I don't have time to get fully into my conspiracy theory, but he was Gary Bettman's right-hand man in hockey, and I think Gary Bettman sent him to baseball to tank the sport and try and make hockey more popular than baseball. That's my that's my conspiracy theory on why Rob Manfred is commissioner and why he does what he does. But again, no time to explore that theory with you. Check out Cody Decker on Big Time Baseball, the Down the Line podcast on the Odyssey app, wherever you get podcasts, catch him frequently on the MLB network and literally at least a half dozen other places you can follow Cody Decker, including on Twitter at Decker6, where he has baseball thoughts and takes. And Cody, I always appreciate your thoughts and takes, my friend. We'll talk again soon. Oh, I appreciate you. And yes, that's true. Everywhere I don't sleep. Go rock that ascot, my friend.